What's your first hockey memory growing up? Could be playing um, or honestly, it was kind of growing up. My dad always put up a rink in our backyard and would kind of just go out there and skate with my friends and, and um, kind of mess around on, on the outdoor rink. And I, w I would say that's probably my first memory of playing hockey. You kind of, you know, did that transition between high school and USHL. What was it like kind of going back and forth, and what were the things that you noticed more when you went back to high school after playing in the USHL a little bit? Yeah, I think um, the biggest difference in the two levels is just pace of play, and also um, every player in the USHL is a really strong player, whereas in high school there's maybe some teams or some players that aren't really as strong. So I'd say that's like the biggest thing I, I noticed, uh, kind of moving back and forth between the two. Um, and like, I think for me it was, um, it wasn't too hard of an adjustment between the two levels, and I, I felt that uh, as I went back and forth, I was able to find success at both both levels. And I'm gonna ask you this two-parter: like, who was the toughest guy that you played against in Minnesota high school, mm -hmm. and then who was the toughest guy that you went head-to-head -to -head against in the USHL? Uh, that's a good question. I'd say hardest for high school. Uh, probably a name not many people know, but Hawk Huff out of Wyzetta. thought he was a really strong player, Re shut down defenseman, made, made it difficult to score on him. And then I'd say in the USHL, probably the guy I went against the most in terms of like games played that was hard was Adam Kleber. Huge frame, shut down defenseman, skates really well for his size, and, and super strong player, made it, made it hard to score goals on him. And, and what's the plan for next season? Are you going straight into Denver, or what's what's going on? I'll, I'll play another year in Sioux City next year. Yeah. yeah. Is there so. anyone uh, you try and model your game after? Yeah, I think a player I kind of like to watch is uh, Mark Shifley. Um, bigger frame guy, uh, super dynamic skill set, and kind of uses his frame really well to get to the front of the net and, and create chances from there. So I like watching him. And if you could steal one trait from any active NHLer and apply it to your game, what would it be? I mean, it's hard not to say McDavid's speed, honestly. I, I, I think that'd be pretty fun to be able to play with that pace and that, and that speed. So, probably that. Yeah. So, you know, knowing that you're going back to the USHL, what's the biggest thing you want to see in terms of improvement? And maybe what are some of the things that the, the guys at Denver want to see out of you for improving next year? Yeah, I think for me it's really just focusing on um, – Kind of adding some strength and uh, a little bit of speed for me next year is going to be really big for me. And I think um, if I'm add, able to add a little bit of strength and, and speed, that's going to help me at the next level when I when I get to Denver in two years. What's the funniest chirp or uh, best piece of trash talk you've ever heard on the ice? Um, I mean, there's probably some I can't really say, but um, I think that's a good one. Um, I'd say like all the great ones are like kind of things you can't really say for media, but but um, it's funny like not necessarily a great chirp, but the thing that I kind of get get chirped for a lot is my hair color. Everybody th for some reason everybody thinks I dye my hair, which I don't for for the record, and so everybody just tells me to go dye my hair, and I'm like I I don't dye my hair, but I think that's pretty funny that they think the blonde is dyed. That's kind of a compliment in the end, right? Yeah. yeah so it's like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, how do you respond to that? Do you ever dish it back? No, I kind of just laugh. I, I, I mean, in, unless it's a guy I really don't like, then I'll yeah. then I'll say something back. But for the most part, it's just laugh it off. And what do you say if you don't? Like? I mean, depends who it is. Uh, I mean, kind of kind of chirps comes on the fly. I don't really can't really think about it. You just gotta for say sure. what comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. If you had to uh, choose an NHL goalie to take some shots against right now, who would it be? Um, Flurry. Growing up, I was a, a Wild fan and a Penguins fan. Uh, my favorite player was always Crosby growing up, so kind of watched the Penguins through my childhood, and, and Flurry was there a lot, so uh, Flurry's always kind of been my favorite goalie, and, and now he's at Minnesota Wild, so kind of uh, followed, him, followed him through his through his career, and he's been on teams I like, so he's probably my favorite goalie ever. You get five shots against him right now. How many do you think go in? I'd be lucky to get one, I'd say. I mean, it's a different level. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. For sure. It never came back. So, it never came, it never came back. But, yeah. Yeah. So, well, now we, at least we know you don't dye your hair. So, there we go. All right. Thank you. Oh, wait. Now I, now I, did, rem I did remember it. So, you know, obviously the, the, the Mr. Hockey designation. 
it's it's a dream for every Minnesota player. But it also has been like a usually leads to the draft. So I mean, you know, how how how'd you feel when you got that? Yeah, I think growing up as a Minnesota kid, uh, you kind of grow up watching these these players and a lot of uh, Mr. Hockey winners that go on to the next level, and you kind of think that's like a, a, a dream award, and um, I was lucky enough for that to become a reality for me, and it's a really big honor and, and something I don't take lightly. Did you talk to Minnesota this week? I did, yes. Yeah, so that, that's, that'd be pretty cool, but... Um, Really just happy with wherever I go and whichever team takes me and be more than happy to get, get to work with them. I'm sorry if you already answered this, but how many interviews did you have this week? Um, I think it was around 15-ish, yeah. And then was, I, know, I heard the, the one kind of interesting thing that Minnesota did, but um, was, there, was there a particular question that you found very hard to answer? Um, one, one question that was kind of hard to answer for me it was like, the question of um, if you had if you could bring one teammate with you to the next level, who would it be? And and I don't think that's hard. Or the reason it was hard is because there's so many guys that I've been lucky enough to play with, both on Minnetonka and in Sioux City, that I would be more than happy to play the rest of my career with. So I think kind of figuring out like which one of all those teammates I'd take was was really hard for me. Yeah, come up with a question that the guys next year get asked. What would it be? If I, was, if I was an interviewer, what would I ask? Hmm. I mean, you can be the interviewer right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think a question that I kind of liked that I that I kind of faced a few times this week is like the question of what's gonna what's gonna differentiate you and what's gonna bring you to the NHL level. And I think that's just a, a strong question because you can really see like what what drives that person and, and what they believe will, will help them get to that next level. What would you answer for that? Um, I would, like, I always just, I'd, I'd say, like, the, my biggest differentiator is, like, my hockey sense and IQ. So that was, I kind of elaborated on that and uh, explained how, how that's going to help me moving forward.